Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. So we're going to talk tonight about true righteousness. Start a new study. I won't get through it tonight. So I'm excited about it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34 says, Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. When you look that word up, it's that awake is like somebody who's been intoxicated, becoming sober-minded. Like the, the, the cloudiness lifting, they become back aware. And so he wants us to awake to righteousness, sis. It, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Now, one of the effects of, of, of understanding righteousness is it helps us overcome temptation. It says, for some have not the knowledge of God. Some have not the knowledge of God. If you don't have knowledge of God, you're not going to awake to righteousness. It, it, is, it is a foundational principle we'll find out here in a little bit. And it is key to everything else in the kingdom of God. If we don't accept righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ, you will not use your faith for your health because you'll find a reason to X yourself off. You will, you'll find the excuse of why you don't qualify to receive what God has for you, whether it's forgiveness. I mean, I deal with people all the time who can't even accept forgiveness because they are basing everything on their behavior. We're going to get set free from that. And righteousness is key. So awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. If we're not alert, we will become sin conscious and we'll live our life sin conscious. We'll be works conscious. And y'all, I have dealt with works conscious people all day long today. All day long. Well, why did somebody not receive? Why did somebody, why did, why did this happen to somebody? They're so good. They're so perfect. They're so, they're so, wait a minute. Let's just wait a minute. Everything, whether you are so good or whether you are so bad, is X'd out and everything in this kingdom, is based on Jesus Christ and his blood. So, so don't say because so good and don't say because so bad. Both are X'd out. And the apostle tells us that, and we'll cover that scripture in a little bit. So don't become sin conscious. Don't live works conscious. Don't live circumstance conscious. We have got to have a righteousness consciousness. Did I get that out? That's two big words in a row for me, and that's difficult for a southern girl. We've got to have the knowledge and be God conscious, be Jesus conscious, be his blood conscious, keeping ourselves fully aware, fully aware that we have been made the righteousness of God in, this is study night, y'all supposed to be able to talk out loud, in Christ Jesus, Right? It's foundational. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 5. I just added this to my notes while ago. So. Hebrews chapter 5, and let's... I want to start in verse 9 because we covered Melchizedek last week when we were talking about Jesus being our high priest. So Hebrews 5, 9. Being made perfect... He became, Jesus, the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For, when the t for, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. 
For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Righteousness is foundational. It's key. We've got to get it established. If it's something that you still struggle with, man, study this. Because if you're, if you're struggling to walk in faith, if you're struggling to be able to receive from God, you're unskillful in the word of righteousness. And don't let that be a slam. We need to know where we are so we know where to get where we need to be. If you're unskillful, how do you get skillful? Exercised. Did you, did you notice that word in the following verses? We got to be exercised. Verse 14 says that. When you look that word unskillful up, it simply means inexperienced or ignorant of. Ignorance is not stupidity. Ignorance is lack of knowledge. So, so being unskillful in righteousness can be fixed with knowledge and practice. Walking in it. That's how you exercise, right? You walk in it. You use it. And, and I love that passage because it shows me how foundational and key righteousness is to the rest of the book. So what does it mean to be righteous? I know this is foundational for most of you, and you already have this down, but let's, let's reawaken ourselves. I'm telling you, it changed everything about the way I thought this afternoon. I was rushed. I left here at 544. I need to be back down here at 620. And I was wallering in it. And I thought, now wait a minute. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I have a position in Christ, and he makes a way for me. He makes a way for me. And if I have a righteousness consciousness, it changes how I see my circumstances but I had to remind myself today after studying it all day. So I know we all need to be reminded. What does it mean to be made righteous? We've been judged righteous by God. Now, it's, it's one thing to be judged something and to have a, a verdict from a judge. It's another thing to have that verdict by the supreme judge where it cannot be challenged any further. I mean, when you get a ruling from the supreme court, you're like, oh, it's done. It's over. It can go no further. You have been judged righteous by the supreme judge. Now, who can lay charge to God's elect? It is God that justifies when he said innocent, it can't be challenged. No further. It can't be, let me see, it can be challenged. The verdict cannot be overruled. Your innocent verdict cannot be overruled. It cannot be, we've got to get that established in ourselves. We've been judged righteous by God, the supreme judge. We now meet with God's approval. Not according to man's standards, but according to God's standards of what rightness is. When, when he says you're righteous, that's not righteous by your standard or man's standards. That's rightness by God's standards. God's, by God's standard, when he said rightness, it was according to his rightness, not what our mind thinks rightness, not what somebody else's mind thinks rightness. We have Jesus is standing with the Father. He took his place in mankind, took on our sin nature, took on the penalty of our sin, and gave us his standing with the Father. We have a hard time wrapping our hands around that, wrapping our minds around that. He gave us his standing. He was, he was the firstborn among many brethren. 
He puts you in there with him in his relationship with the Father. What, what would the Father deny Jesus? What would he deny him? And Jesus puts you in that standing with him, and yet we feel like we're, we're stretching something because, of the, because we've done something wrong to, to believe God that we're healed by the stripes of Jesus, to believe God that he would provide what our families need. You wouldn't think Jesus would have a hard time with that, would you? Jesus walked the earth the whole 33 and a half years dependent on the Father. And he didn't have any qualms about that. Why? Because he was righteous. He understood his standing with the Father. Right standing, righteousness means we have a right relationship with God. We have a right relationship with God. We've been declared innocent. We've been declared just. We've been made holy. We can stand in a, in a condition that's acceptable and approved to God. I like one definition that a guy gave. He said, in a state that is all that God requires a man to be. When you stand in Christ's righteousness, You've met every requirement that God requires of mankind. You're accepted there. And accepted doesn't mean, sometimes I think when we say, I'm accepted, it's just like, you're okay. Let me tell you, if you're okay in the eyes of God, that's a really good, big okay. And and it's not lesser than anything. It's big. Righteousness isn't earned. That's what righteousness isn't. We just talked about what righteousness is. Righteousness isn't earned. It's, it's, it's unattainable by obedience to the law. We'll, we'll see that in Scripture. You cannot obtain righteousness by being obedient to the law. If you could have, then the New, the new Testament wouldn't have been needed. Jesus wouldn't have been needed. We would have just kept going under the old law, under the old covenant, and if you were obedient to it, then you would be righteous. But that is not the way it worked. It was unobtainable by obedience to any law. It's not gained by anything that you do other than faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. Go with me to Romans 10. We're jumping in the middle here. As you know, the apostle very seldom takes a breath. So you just kind of have to pick a verse and start there. Kind of like, I feel like I'm doing tonight. We'll try to give you time to turn there and take a breath. Romans 10, 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Oh, he's an equal opportunity God. This life is available to anyone, no matter how great they lived, no matter how sorry they've lived. It it doesn't matter because it's not based on them. It's based on Jesus Christ. But he says, when people are ignorant of God's righteousness, they'll go about to establish their own righteousness. And we have to catch ourselves when we do that. And, And listen for yourself. Listen to these words. If you catch yourself saying them, you'll know. I, I'm, I've got my own fig leaves here covering up my own sin. Like Adam and Eve in the garden. It doesn't work. But you'll hear people say, I don't understand why I haven't received my healing. I've gone to church. I've listened to the word. I've been, had hands. I've, how about we just say, 
I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus because Jesus' blood was shed for me. And when we start saying, I, 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 we need to pay attention to that because we're going over into a works-based righteousness. And it, it, it did not work in the Old Testament. It will not work in the New Testament. It is based on Jesus Christ and him alone. So pay attention that you're not establishing your own rightness, that you have a right because you catch yourself. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone, everyone that believes. Verse 10. Skip down to verse 10. For with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness. So righteousness, just like everything else in the Word of God, is based on faith. Can you believe this? For with the heart man believeth. It, you look up the, that word, believeth, it means faith. With the heart man believeth or has faith unto righteousness. So righteousness is not based on something we do. It's based on what we believe. And with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him will not be ashamed. This is the only, this is the only way. This is the only way to righteousness is by the heart to believe. We have to accept the fact that we can't do anything to be righteous. Jesus did everything for us to be righteous. It's really hard for us to let go of works-based religion. Really hard. Uh, I think it's because we earn a paycheck, we earn a grade, we earn rewards, we earn, we earn, we earn, we earn attention, we earn favor in the world system. We earn, we're so used to works-based performance that when it comes to God and we have to simply believe, we have trouble with that. It's, it's easier for us to work for it than it is for us to just believe that it's ours. If, if we can work for it, I guess we can just justify ourselves somehow. But we don't justify ourselves. He justifies us. Turn with me to Philippians 3. We're going to cover quite a bit of Scripture tonight, as you can tell. Oh, man, I love this. Don't you love the apostle? He's so honest and so transparent. Philippians 3, we're going to jump in on verse 4. I'm reading out of the NIV on this one. He's talking about himself here. He says, If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I just love him. Oh, I, love his, I love his personality. If anybody thinks they have reason to be confident in themselves, to have confidence in themselves, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. And in regarding to the law, I was Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, I was faultless. As for legalistic righteousness, I was... What he was saying is, I followed the law. So if anybody had a right to be confident in the flesh, it was me. That's exactly what he's saying. But listen, verse 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. He had to give it up. He had to give it up. I can't imagine. Of course, he had a really life-altering experience with Jesus, right? On the road to Damascus. But... He had to be willing to give up who he thought he was. On the good side, what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter, good or bad, our righteousness cannot be based on us. Whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness 
of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. The apostle wants you to locate him, and he wants you to find him in Christ. He wants you to see him in Christ. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Your standing with God does not come from the law. It is not works-based, performance-based, but it comes through faith in Christ, comes from God, and is by faith. Simple as that. We have to read it and believe it and receive it. Jesus died for you. Your standing, your right standing with God is established in him. If you're in him, you have righteousness. You are, I mean, you don't have righteousness. You are righteous. It's who you are. It's your divine nature. It's your new nature. Go to Romans 5. If you don't get the point that you are justified and made righteous by faith, you've, you've really been asleep. <laughs> because that is the whole point of the night before we can move on to the effects of righteousness next week. We have got to get it. We've got to get it where we don't slip back into works. Romans 5 verse 1 says, Therefore being justified. You look that word justified up. It means rendered innocent and righteous. Therefore, being justified, rendered innocent and righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We've been justified, rendered, rendered innocent and righteous by faith, we have peace with God. God is at peace with you if you are in Christ Jesus. Y'all, that's a good day. Because we have a world of people who think God's mad at them. Whether they're good people or whether they've done really wrong things. There's a whole world of people that think God is holding something against them. But your righteousness is in Christ Jesus. It's not in you. You are in him. <laughs> and there is a huge difference. And because of that righteousness, you have access by faith. We talked, was it last week? We talked about the high priest. Jesus has made a way for you to have access to the throne room of God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the maker of heavens and earth. You have access. And you don't have to go to some temple or go through some priest other than your high priest, Jesus Christ, to have access to the creator of the universe. And if you don't understand righteousness, you won't go there. And I hear people say, I don't want to trouble God with that. Like he doesn't have time? Like he's spread too thin? No, what it is, is you don't know that you are righteous and that you have access and that that is why he sent Jesus is because he wanted you to come. There is nothing small to God in your life. I'm telling you, he cares about our living. And you don't abuse it. I don't even know how you could abuse it. If you're going in righteousness, I don't even know how you could abuse it. It says that he'll not withhold any good thing from us. No good thing. He will, he will not withhold any good thing. He's given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. If we shrink back, it's because of a lack of righteousness. I should say a lack of the knowledge of righteousness because you have it. It's a gift. We'll read about that here in a minute. He is the justifier 
God is the justifier. God is the ju- God has justified you. He has found you just. He has rendered you just. He has declared a verdict over you that you are the just. Romans 3, 25 and 26 tells you that. He's the justifier of him who believes on Jesus Christ. God is the justifier. How freeing is that? Anybody else in here ever deal with the fear of man? Righteousness is your answer. Righteousness is your answer. We've all dealt with it. I still deal with it sometimes. And righteousness is the answer because God is the justifier. The the question is, can we let go of performance mentality and submit to that? Can we just submit to that? You know, we don't always like that word submit. But what it really means is that we have a choice to let something else have authority and dominion other than ourselves. Now, when people don't know that God is good, they're going to hold back from submitting to him. Well, let me tell you, he's good. He's good, and he is love, and there is no evil in him. There's no shadow of turning in him, and he is asking us to submit to righteousness, and that means let right standing with him have dominion in my thinking, have dominion in my actions, have dominion in my words. You think about it. If righteousness has dominion over your words, how would you speak? I would speak differently. And I believe God's having me study this for me. Because too often I am a victim of the day, of the circumstance, of the pressure, of the lawsuit, of the loss, of the... But if you understand righteousness and if I can wrap my head up around me being righteous in Christ Jesus, I cannot have a victim mentality. It's impossible. So when I start in, I have to know, Susan, you need to awake yourself to righteousness. You need to sober up because you've been intoxicated by something else other than the Word of God. You're under the influence of something else, and I'm supposed to be under the influence of righteousness, and it'll change how we do things. We're righteous legally. It's not shady. It's legal. By the supreme judge, I am legally righteous. He has declared me righteous. That verdict cannot be overturned, and it's through the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Right actions, when we're aware of righteousness, right actions will follow the awareness of righteousness. And it's not vice versa. It's not the awareness of righteousness follows right actions. Because you know as well as I do, you will never be good enough. It's like, it's like a bag of sand with a hole in it. You keep doing good, doing good, trying to be good, doing good, trying to be good, and it just slips right out. It's never enough. But when we accept righteousness, when we submit to it, then right actions follow that. Right actions come out of us accepting that we have been made righteous, not that we're acting righteous. The actions will follow the submitting I promise. I've done it both ways, and his way works a whole lot better than mine. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Aren't you glad we don't have to earn it? And I think that's why people shrink back from the study of righteousness and being able to say, I am righteous. I mean, people just won't hardly say it. It's like it's, like it's blasphemy or something to say that they're righteous. 
you know, you just call somebody a saint, and they're just like, oh, I'm no saint. Yes, you are. You're righteous. Don't shrink back from that. I think we just, we shrink back because we put it on it, it being something that we've done instead of something he's done. We've been made righteous. Made righteous. He made me righteous. I didn't become righteous. He made me righteous. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Why? Why? Why did God make Jesus to be sin for me? Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the whole reason that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Amplified says that we might be made what we ought to be, approved and acceptable and in right relationship with God. That's how we get there. That's how we get there is by accepting this righteousness. I like this because it said God made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't sin. Jesus didn't sin. He wasn't sin. He submitted to being made sin. Remember, into thy hands I commit my spirit. We talked about that for two weeks. Jesus submitted. He wasn't, he hadn't sinned. He wasn't sin. He submitted to being made sin. Now let's flip that. Likewise, we don't do anything to earn righteousness. We weren't righteous. We didn't do anything to become righteous, but we have to submit to being made righteous. Jesus had to, be, to submit to be made sin. I have to submit to righteousness. I have to accept it, plain and simple. Don't fight it. Don't, find, don't X yourself out of it. It's for everyone that believeth. Romans 5. You probably, you're still there? Close? In case y'all can't tell, just as we talked about the book of Hebrews last week on Jesus being the high priest, I said y'all need to read the book of Hebrews, and some of you did it. Get a star in your crown. This week I want to say, if you want to know about righteousness, you need to read the book of Romans. Read the book of Romans. If, the, if, you, if you need this, read the book of Romans. And um, I was at Michelle Steele's a couple of weeks ago doing a, a women's Bible study for her, and she gave me her new book called Redeemed and Righteous by Nature. Who needs that? You need that, sis? This is the book, and it's got, excuse all of my highlighting and lines, and it's got the study guide. So you can work through it. And it is excellent, and I recommend it. Righteous by nature. All right, Romans 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, who was that? Adam. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, they which receive, circle that, Highlight it, underline it. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. This is the key to life. This is the key to life. Not life reigning over you. This is the key to you reigning over life. It's righteousness. If by one man, Adam's offense, Death reigned by one, much more they which receive. You look that word up and it means those that will take or get a hold of. Those that will take or get a hold of the abundance of grace. God will not be outdone. If death reigned by one, by an offense, then God's going to have an abundance of grace. Because where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. God just won't be outdone. 
So whatever it is that's in your life that's kept you separated from God or, or kept back your freedom in the presence of God, just know, whatever that is, God has something much more, and it's called grace. Abundance of grace and of the free gift. Look the word gift up, because sometimes we twist gift in our heads. Oh, that's a gift. Well, if you paid something for it, it's not a gift. If you manipulated something, it's not a gift. It's the free gift. Nothing, no strings attached, nothing. You have been given the free gift of righteousness. And if you'll take hold of it, you will reign in life. Reign in life. Are you tired of circumstances ruling over you? Are you tired of situations ruling over your mind, over your money, over your family? There is a way for you to reign in life, and it's called the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness. Therefore, verse 18, as by the offense of one Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, Jesus, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Justification of life. You have been acquitted. You have been pronounced innocent. You have been justified. You have been declared just and innocent by the supreme judge, by the supreme God, by righteousness. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. It came upon all men. It's available to anybody. All men. That works for me. I don't know about y'all, because I can't say all those things Paul said about himself. But it's for all men. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. What do you have to do with that? What do you have to do with that? You have to take hold of the gift. And when it says take hold, I believe it means take hold. Antonio, if you give me a, a good gift and my mother tries to take it from me, I am going to take hold. I'm going to take hold of it. We need to take hold of righteousness and quit letting our past rob us from it, quit letting the opinions of people take it from us. Take hold of the free gift of righteous, righteousness and be made righteous. The gift will make you righteous. He's good, isn't he? Ah, oh, this standing with God. It's Jesus is standing with God. He gave it to us as a gift. It's an acceptance. It's a justification. It's an innocent nature that's provided for you. And it's free. It's your new nature. It's the divine nature. 2 Peter 1, 4 says it's that you can be partakers of the divine nature. Do you think there's unrighteousness in God's nature? Well, you're partakers of the divine nature. And you have right standing. It's legal. It's legally yours by faith in the blood of Christ. It's not based on how you feel. I love an example that Michelle still gives in that book that I gave Sis over there. She says, it's, she said, think about marriage. Marriage is a legal document. You are married. You may wake up some days and not feel married. You may not feel like you want to be married. But you're married. You're married. By the law, you're married. It's not based on how you feel. Your marriage is not based on how you feel. You are married. It is legal. A judge will uphold it. It is legal. You are righteous. You've been made righteous. It's, it's legal. A judge will uphold it. A supreme judge will uphold it. You are righteous, and it's not based on how you feel. And I think sometimes we battle that because we do things that are wrong or we let guilt from the past come back on us, and we start basing our righteousness off feelings. It's not righteous. 
It's not based on feelings. It is legal. It is legal. It's sealed in blood. It's done deal. You have been made righteous. Go with me to Colossians 3. Isn't it good to be accepted? You know, we, we stand before God in Christ, but we also stand before men in Christ. It, it's, it's not compartmentalized. We're in Christ. That's where we live. It's our position. That's our location. That's where we are. We're in Christ, and we are righteous in Christ. <laughs> I stand before the mirror in Christ. When I look at myself and I don't like what I see or I don't like something I've done, I need to be aware of righteousness because that's the only thing that will alter my behavior in the right way. I don't know about you, but guilt doesn't work well for me. If I eat a snicker out of the bag and I feel guilty about it, I'll just eat the whole bag. Well, it sounds like i got some other snicker lovers in here, don't I? That's what guilt does. Guilt doesn't correct us. Guilt drives us down. But righteousness causes righteous actions to follow it. So, that's a side lesson about Snickers. All right. That's why I don't keep it back. Colossians 3, verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. I oh, know. You've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. For you died. <laughs> you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That's the mindset of righteousness. You are seated with Christ. You've been raised with Christ. So set your minds on things that are above and quit messing around with this earth, earthly mindset and, and think like you're seated. Think like you're seated with Christ. That's what righteousness will do for you. Think like you're seated with Christ. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You've changed positions. Righteousness will change your position. You're a child of God. A child. You're a child of God. That changes your position. Where you stand or where you're seated changes what you see. It changes what you see. Now, y'all are, are seated out there. And what you see, I'm sorry. <laughs> what you see, you have one choice, basically. And that's what's up here. Where you're seated changes what you see. But right standing changes what you see. It changes how you see. It changes how you see everything. 2 Corinthians 5.16 says, From now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. What if we regor regard everyone from a righteous point of view? What if we accept righteousness and we submit to righteousness and we see from a point of righteousness instead of from a worldly point of view? Wouldn't it be different, Kathy? You got your Bible and your notebook with you? Oh, great, I've got a seat for you. Aren't you glad you put your makeup on? Okay. We've been seated with Christ in heavenly places. We, we are seated in Christ. Our life is hid in Him. Now, tell me, Kathy, did your view change? <laughs> it changes if you change positions your view has to change 
We're not the unrighteous. Because let me tell you, when we stand in unrighteousness, sin consciousness, then I start seeing you through sin consciousness. And you know what I see in you when I'm standing in sin consciousness? I see your sin. Because that's the position I'm in. That's what I'm standing in. But if I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, and my life is hidden in Him, then you know what I see when I look at you? Changes everything. It changes everything. I tried to get you out of the camera where you wouldn't have to be conscious. The whole, no, you stay right there, girl. You can't leave that position. You're, you've been made righteous. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. From now on, she can no longer see me from that view where she was seated. She now has to see me from that view because she has changed positions. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And everything changes. Everything changes. In Christ is your new location. It's your new position. It's your new nature. It's your new standpoint from which you, you face everything and approach everything. Your finances are now viewed from this position. What are you worried about? You're seated with Christ. You have a standing before the Father God in His throne room. What what are we worried about? Our families going through issues. If we're seated in Christ, how are we going to see it? It just really, it just changes our approach on everything that we face. Romans 8.30 out of, the, out of the Phillips translation, which is an old translation, a lot of you may not have, but he says, he made them righteous in his sight and then lifted them to the splendor of life as his own sons. Isn't that good? He made them righteous in his sight and lifted them to the splendor of life as his own sons. How do things look when you're a son of God? How do things look when you're a child of God? If your position never changes and you don't accept that righteousness, you'll never change that mindset. That's what we're working on. We're changing our mindset so that our viewpoint from now is a son's view instead of a sinner's view. You're not sinners. You were sinners, and you were saved by grace. You're not sinners. You're not sinners. You're you're not sinners. You may sin, but you're not a sinner. You're saved by grace. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if you sin, it's none of the devil's business. You go to God, and the Scripture is very plain that if you confess your sin to our Savior, that He is faithful and just and He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All of it. Not a trace of it left. And you'll sit there just like you've never done anything wrong. And people have a really hard time with that because they want to pay penance for what they've done. Jesus paid for what you've done. Okay. We're getting ready to... Oh, man. Ephesians 4, where does the time go on Wednesday nights? We'll wrap up with this scripture and a few comments and we'll continue next week. Ephesians 4, verse 23. I'm reading out of the NIV on this one. Those of you who have electrical devices. Be made new in the attitude of your mind. That's really what we're talking about, right? We're we're, we're becoming righteous, conscious. Be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self. Listen to this. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You were created to be like God in true righteousness and true holiness. 
You were created to be like God in true righteousness and true holiness. I just have to say that over. And if you want to know how you get something from here to here, say it. You know, take these scriptures and make you a confession out of it. Father, I thank you that I have a new attitude of mind, and it is one of righteousness. I have changed my position, and I am in Christ Jesus, and I put on the new self, and I am created to be like you in true righteousness and true holiness. I think sometimes we make this a lesser than righteousness or a lesser than holiness. This is Jesus' righteousness and holiness. It is not lesser. It does not weaken when it goes from Jesus to me because I am in Christ. Go and look up all the scriptures about in Christ, in him. They're astounding. So it's not a lesser than righteousness or a lesser than holy. It's not a lesser than stand before God than what Jesus has. And you will get thrown out of a lot of good churches for saying that. But you are not standing there on your own merit. You are standing there in Christ Jesus. She is there in Christ Jesus. So the righteousness is not lesser than. The holiness is not lesser than. Because it's not based on her flesh. It's based on her faith. Her faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, if you can get a hold of this, it'll help your faith. It will, it will influence your faith. It, faith. It'll be a catalyst or a fertilizer to your faith. But if you don't have a righteousness consciousness, you're going to X yourself out of all the promises of God. You'll just find a reason that it doesn't apply to you. But it applies to you because the blood's applied to you, right? If you weaken righteousness, you'll weaken the truth all the way through the word. If you weaken the word of righteousness, you will weaken across the board through the word. Everything will be weakened. You will never take anything. You'll, you'll always cap stuff. And you'll always X yourself out. But if you will submit to it and give it dominion, let it rule your thoughts, your words, and your actions, and accept righteousness it's going to enhance everything in that book. Everything in that book is going to be for you. And y'all, if it's not, we're wasting our time. I can read literature at home. But righteousness is going to enhance everything that's in there. It's going to bring it to life, and you're going to want to pick up that Bible, and you're going to want to read it. If you don't want to read your Bible, you've got to ask yourself why. Because righteousness will bring it to life and it will make it real to you. I want to end with Isaiah 3 and 10 tonight. And this is so funny because, um, of course, this is what I was studying. And I, when I pulled up my Bible program, it always gives you like a little daily verse or whatever. This was the verse. So sometimes you just got to love how God works. Tell the righteous. Oh, who in here is righteous? Because I'm supposed to tell you something. Tell the righteous, it'll be well with you. Now, if you don't see yourself as the righteous, you won't receive that. But if you see yourself as the righteous, that's going to light a fire in you. Whatever it is, tell the righteous, it will be well with you. Amen? If you're righteous, you can stand. If you stay seated, I'm going to come... We're going to come talk some more. So <laughs> let the redeemed of the Lord. We're saying so. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.